Good afternoon, everybody. It's so cool that you can catch me while I'm in my car driving in traffic. Anyway, those of you that understand that and the inside joke, hopefully you got a chuckle. Anyway, something that I wanted to talk about, um, some of the things that I'm asked to talk about is mindset, you know, and just sometimes it's approach, you know, we all want to have that winning attitude and the, and the mind, you know, that's like a bear trap and, you know, we have laser-like focus and all, you know, well, that's, that's really cool. And I think all of us that do this to a certain level have a certain degree of that. But one of the things that I see and that I wanted to talk about today is when you when you have disappointments and, and how to overcome them. And I think by and large what you have to do is do you're not going to get, there's no perfect training cycles. We've talked about that before. Nothing's going to be perfect. There is no magic. There's no, you know, it's like you have a tough training cycle and then you want to go, well, it'll all come together meet day, you know, because I'm more intense and all that kind of stuff. And that simply doesn't exist. And what it really comes down to is a couple of choices. Again, that's the, thing, the premise of strength. This is the thing that I love about strength. It's a very simple process. It's just exceedingly difficult. So, generally, the solutions are simple. The processes are simple. And, uh, again, that doesn't equate to easy. But, but that's good news. That, that's a positive. Because, you know, we don't have to put on our white lab coats and feel like we have to be a professor of some sort of exercise science to figure out what what am I going to do to go forward. But I think you have to be subjective and objective in your approach and how you think. So let's look at this. I have three examples. I won't tell you their names. I'll just explain to you some of the things that they've gone through. I had a young man last night and this kid, he wants it bad. He works hard. He's watching YouTube videos. He's asking tons of questions and drives me apeshit. And that's perfect. That's his job. He, he wants it bad enough that he's looking at things and trying to determine, is this something I need? Is this something I want? Is this cool? All those things. I mean, he's 17 years old. But the thing that I can tell you definitively is he wants to do this really, really bad. And so, uh, lifting last night, uh, this particular movement, he ties his PR from a week ago, which was a new PR. And um, I can see a couple of things, and I tell him, you know, hey, you're going to have to make this adjustment. It's going to show up on that next set. So we go up five pounds for his next set, and the uh, the objective is to get six reps with it. And he gets five, makes a couple of technical errors uh, with stability and breathing, and can't push through the sixth one. So after his rest period, I asked him what he wanted to do, and he wanted another shot at it. I expected that. And uh, we, again, went over you know, the couple of things that, you know, the mistakes that he made, that, and these are not difficult adjustments, and uh, unfortunately made the same errors, and the result was the same. He got five reps, so I was like, all right, we're going to move on, and we do, on this particular session, we do a 20-pound drop for our final set and do eight reps, and it basically stapled him to the bench. And when I asked him what happened, because I was really surprised um, that he didn't get one rep, he didn't know. And I knew at that that point, he was physically and mentally done. So we moved on and did assistance. And later, later found out that he was pretty bummed out. So let's look at that. Of course, when you, you know, what he was going to do was hit 300 
and, and you know when we get those 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 that's a milestone number you know 200 300 100 a thousand whatever the case may be we start round, you know hitting those round century mark numbers you know it's it's a big deal and he was extremely disappointed now what is wrong with being disappointed the answer is nothing what can be an issue is how you choose to allow that to affect you how are you going to process that and he was bummed out enough that when he got home he was upset now I want to I want to tell you what the positives are to take from that never that I am aware of has this lifter ever held 300 pounds in his hands for anything let alone for two sets of five I understand he missed the sixth rep twice and that is a failure I understand that I also understand that the failure came and this is good news not because of his strength but because he made a mistake a technical error and that is something that with just a little bit of time I am positive that he will fix and once he breaks that 300 pound barrier he'll be off to the races you know but that and that's how these things go and, and it's it's a good moment to learn that you've got to earn this you know you can't be sloppy you can't make technical errors especially and he knows better I'm not dogging him I'm just saying he knows and you know one of the things that I try to teach is it's easy to focus when you're warming up with the bar when you're under the duress of a, of a personal record you know or a max you know effort movement you have to be able to keep your wits about you under the duress of that weight that's something they hear me say pretty frequently you know and the focal points are, are just you, you learn to become intuitive by your training so your focal points are those certain cues, whatever they may be for you, and that you're precise with executing your form. All these are very basic and very simple processes. They're just very difficult to do when you're at 100%, and in this case, a hair over 100%. And so the takeaway from that is, yes, he missed the sixth rep and missed it twice, but in the end, he hit two sets of five with a weight that he's never had in his hands before. And the next time that that 300 pounds is put in his hands, it will not be a surprise. It will not be a shock. It will be familiar. And what you learn is even with those bigger weights is you become familiar with how you feel under that stress and how to become precise and how to stay focused where you can perform under the pressure, you know, and the duress of the weight. And so I didn't say anything about it that night. I will see him likely tomorrow and we'll discuss that. Because what you can't do, and this is really hard, and, and I and this I can speak about this from both sides because I used to feel like if I didn't lift well, if I didn't perform well, that I was letting all these people down. It was going to hurt my business. I'd wasted my time. I'd blown my legacy to my son. I mean, that's that's just ridiculous pressure. You know, we all want to do well, and we should strive to do well. The bar should be high. But failure's not the end. Quitting is the end. And what I don't want to see happen is something... Here's a young man. I mean, he wants this bad. And I... I hate to see in a moment where even though there's a couple moments I was hard on him during the session and because it is important that he realizes you know that he's responsible for the miss but in all that you cannot let that frustration rob you of your joy of what you want to do you know there's things that I do things that I say that I hope will evoke a reaction or a moment of focus and you have to make a decision how that's going to affect you. You can get sullen, you can get sour, 
or you can go, well, you fat fuckhead, I'm going to show you, you know, you only get so many times, you can't do that all the time, I mean, you know, I'm not all about negative reinforcement, but sometimes you've got to be able to receive that foot in your ass and go, you know what, that fat head is right, and not only am I going to prove him wrong, I'm going to show him that I can do this. And more, prove it to yourself, you know. One of, one of the one of the greatest things for me as a coach, and if you've read anything I've ever written, the thing that I love is seeing the realization of a goal achieved. And a lot of times those goals, especially big lifetime goals, where it's like you never think you can do it. You, not only did you once think it improbable, it was likely impossible. And then you come to that point B, the finish line, and you, you achieved it. And those achievements, those successes are built on the backs of, of several failures and frustrations. You know, that's the thing. We do something, uh, this lifter in particular, he, he had an expectation. And that expectation is also the seed of frustration. And this kind of comes full circle in. So when you're frustrated, what do you do? Well, you evaluate. And you do so as positively as you can. In a, in a situation like this, while I understand the frustration of missing the weight for the prescribed reps, again, the takeaway is that there was a total of 10 reps done with a weight that the lifter had never seen before in his hands. And a couple more sessions, and he'll have it. And then we'll move on to bigger and better things and, and upwards and onwards. So it's okay to be frustrated. It is not okay for that frustration to create an emotional response that controls you. Because when it controls you in a negative manner, then you are no longer in control. And, and those types of things, it's just like, you know, success can breed success. That negative thing, that, that frustration, that, that can breed more of the frustration. And so you have to always have your hands on the wheel. You're pulling the rope. You ever tried to push a rope? Doesn't work. Pull, bring it to you. You gotta go to it, you gotta get it on. Pull that rope. So hopefully, you know, this is a good example. Um, I'm gonna tell you, Melissa, Melissa's one of those hard gainers. I don't, I don't know why. I mean, I, I can speculate and I can give you a list of reasons as to why, but at the end of the day, I can tell you what it's not. It is not because she does not work her ass off. She works harder than me. She tries harder, you know, and she's athletic and all those things, but man, it just comes hard to her. And it's one of those things where she's also a very emotional person. And it's one of the things that I love about it. I, and I'm not going to go into a bunch of personal things, but there's some very specific things emotionally that, for me, you know, as her mate, completely separates her from anyone that I know. And, and, it's, and, it, and that's, that's one of the things that, for me, makes her so unique. Now, the other side of that is when you're that emotional, it can get away from you really quick. And so where she has struggled, it's twofold. One, when I have to get bare down, it elicits an emotional response that is not positive, and it makes her uncoachable. And, and so I'm not picking on her, because there's many of us are like that. And what I want you to understand is when you become uncoachable, especially when you have coaches that are invested and, and really working hard for you, it makes it very difficult for them to help you dig out of that hole. And the other thing is, is that, like I was saying before, that negativity begets more negativity. So today, you know, struggling a little bit, she's tired, she had to get an adjustment, it, it, was, it was time, and you know, they found several issues that were contributing to some of her difficulty. And the thing I kept reminding her, as frustrated as she was, she hit all the prescribed weight, all the sets, all the reps. Were they pristine? No, they weren't. But the last I checked, powerlifting and strongman is not a fucking fashion show. 
all right? You're not a princess. You're a fucking athlete. And it's really hard, and sometimes strength is really fucking ugly. And it comes down to, I did lift it. I did not. I picked up the stone. I did not. You did. You didn't. Black, white. I did. I did not. The end. And so what was the end result? She did. And so the thing that I kept trying to impress upon her and the thing that I want you guys to take away from this is that she did it and sometimes you have to accept the win for what it is and you have to take the triumph and walk away. Is it precise? No. Is it pristine? No. Are you going to come back and keep training and, 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 and work to improve? The answer is yes. Did you miss any reps? No. Then we're walking away with a positive experience that, hey, I'm going to get better. I'm going to, I'm going to do, I'm going to evaluate. You know, did did I miss something along the way? And that's another, that's another V log entirely. The last lifter I want to talk about is sometimes, and I want to just be brief. You know, sometimes you do everything right. You got God-given talent. You were blessed. You train hard. You study. You, you eat right. You drink right. You rest right. You do everything right, and shit happens, and you get sick. Don't know why. You just do. And the thing I've learned, especially with strength athletes, and especially people that really want to do this, you know, there's a lot of us that will, we catch a cold, we might take a few days off. You know, if it's a little creepy, we may be gone for over a week, you know, but not this particular athlete. And sometimes it's serious enough that it takes not days, it takes weeks. And, and that's what, there have been some challenges for this lift in this training cycle. And, and again, coming full circle, you have to take the triumphs for what they are. And when you see how you struggle and it makes you think, again, you have to decide how that's going to affect you. And, and in, in this particular lifter's case, they became analytic and looking at things. Very frustrating process. And, and I wasn't frustrated at the lifter. I was frustrated for the lifter. You know, this, this is someone that is, is, is doing all the right things. And sometimes nature happens. Sometimes shit just happens. You know, man makes plans and God laughs, you know. And, and you you got to roll with the punches. you got to be resilient. And you got to make adjustments. And... It may not be exactly what you want, but if it gets you to your goal, and in this case the goal is really simple, is to win, that's the number one priority. So, you know, we're going to have to look at things when all is said and done and be very analytic and be very open and honest. And I think the, the come away from all this, once it's all said and done, is we'll have learned a lot when, you know, I don't want it to be over cliched, but man, when you face when you face that kind of challenge and that kind of adversity, especially over a given period of time, you learn a lot about yourself. You learn a lot about your character, and you learn a lot about being resilient. And that's hard. It's an acquired skill, you know. And even for the people that it comes naturally to, I mean, you, you take enough shots when you don't feel good, and you know you not a hundred percent it gets tough it gets frustrating you know and especially to the people this really means something to it gets even more difficult but she's got a plan we got a plan it's going to be fine and i fully expect that the results will be positive and i'm very confident in that. so the takeaway from all that is is choosing how these things are going to affect you it's okay to get pissed. It's okay to get mad enough that you cry. What is not okay is that it becomes a controlling factor and that it becomes a breeding ground for more of the same. And so look at it. Once it's all said and done, once you're, you know, once you get pissed off and that's okay, you get over it and you look at it analytically and you take the positives that you can find and you build from that. You work from that. You're not going to be sick for forever. You're not going to struggle for forever, and you're not going to fail for forever. I mean, you know, be the tortoise, and that, that guy that keeps hitting that big giant boulder with a little hammer, 
you hit that thing enough times, it'll, it'll become rubble, I assure you. So hopefully you gleaned something from that, and hope you enjoy it. Have a good weekend, everybody.